Welcome to this demonstration of protecting Oracle 11G using DoubleTake. I'll start by reviewing the disk capacities on my Oracle server. I have a 50 gig E drive for the Oracle database and a 40 gig C drive for Windows. I've deployed a target server which is also running the same version of Windows, but I've used a 50 gig drive for Windows and a 60 gig drive for the Oracle database. This extra capacity on my target server gives me 10% of disk space to use for volume shadow copies, snapshots of the data on the target server, which gives me a previous point in time I can fail over to if I wish. It's important to specify a maximum amount of space to use for volume shadow copies so that you don't end up using the entire disk space. Okay, back on my Oracle server, I'm just going to launch the Oracle admin console for 11G and I'm going to open the one database control for the demo database that I created earlier. I'm just going to quickly log in as sys and use the password that was configured during installation and select connect as sysdba and hit the log on button. This will bring up the Oracle Enterprise Manager 11G console. Now, before I start using Oracle, I'm going to use double take availability full server failover manager to configure protection for the Oracle server. So I specify my source name, which is Oracle One, provide credentials to log into the server called Oracle One. DoubleTake will collect information about the source server Oracle One. Then I'll specify my target server, which is called Oracle One DR. I'm going to configure protection. I can choose to exclude volumes or exclude directories. I'm just going to include all volumes because I've got my operating system and my databases on the C and the E. I'm going to exclude the temp folder and I'm going to enable snapshots to begin on the hour um, starting at 11 a.m today. I can choose my failover properties, set a failure detection interval, the default being 25 seconds. I can choose to apply the IP address from the Oracle server to the target Oracle server, or I can configure DNS to update DNS if I was to fail over across to a remote subnet. I can choose to enable or disable compression. I have three levels of compression I can choose from. I can choose the type of mirror, either a full mirror or a checksum mirror, and I can choose the route I wish to replicate the traffic through. Once completed, I'm going to specify a validate configuration. Double take is going to take a look at the target server and the source server. Verify that it is compatible match, things like the correct operating system, the sufficient disk space, etc. And then it will confirm that servers are configured correctly. And before I configure protection, I'm just going to open up the E drive on the target server. We can actually see there's no data on the E drive of the target server yet. As soon as I enable protection, DoubleTake is going to create the replication set containing all of the information we require, uh, the full server in this case, and it's going to create a connection and start mirroring. We can already see that data has appeared in the uh, eDrive of the target server. We can see the protection status as initializing, and soon it will change to mirroring. There you go, mirroring, and it is showing a percentage of how far along we ha have uh, completed the mirror it gives an indication of how long the mirror is going to take. So double take is mirroring and replicating at the same time. Just to show you a quick demonstration of the replication in progress, if I open up the E drive on the Oracle server and I'm just going to create a new folder. Okay, created a new folder. I'm just going to re rename it to changing data. And we can see it is replicated in real time to the target server. When I delete it, it is also deleted off the target server. Okay, the mirror has completed and the protection status is now enabled. It's now time to use the Oracle 
um, administration console just to make some changes. Now I'm no expert at Oracle, but I have figured out enough to create a new table in a database. So I'm just going to do just that, create a table called demo table, and I'm going to create a column called column one uh, with a size and save it. And that's the only change I'm going to make on the Oracle side of things. I can now simulate a failure of the Oracle server. I'm basically just going to disconnect the network cable, disable the network interface in Windows, and we'll see that double take will detect the failure and prompt us to fail over. Remember there was a default of 25 seconds before a failover condition is detected and before you would be alerted via email or SNMP to the failover condition. We can now see the failover condition has been met and I can hit the failover button. Double take is going to ask us when we'd like to fail over to. Would we like to fail over to a snapshot that had been taken previously or the live data? I'm just going to select the live data and we'll enable the failover process. We can see that the status is applying system state. This could take quite a while, usually between 6 to 15 minutes depending on the speed of the hardware being used. I'm going to accelerate the video so we can watch the entire failover process in a just a few minutes. And while the failover is occurring, I'm just going to set up a continuous ping, uh, pinging both the Oracle One name and the Oracle One DR name. You can see that I am getting a response from the uh, ping going to Oracle One dash DR, but I'm not getting a response from Oracle One um, on failover that that should actually swap around. So while double take is applying the system state, what it is actually doing is merging in the system state, including the Windows folder, program files, the registry, or merging that in with the system state of the target server. When the system state merge is complete, double take will restart the target server, as we can see is occurring now. We can see we have lost the ping for the continuous ping, pinging the name of oracle-dr. And we can see on the left hand side, we're actually getting a reply now from the ping to the server name, the IP address belonging to oracle1. We can see the double take protection status is now failed over. So I'll now close the two continuous pings and also the full server failover manager console. I'm going to log on to the Oracle DR server um, using domain credentials. I'm just going to launch the system properties on the original source Oracle server and on the target server and I can confirm that the server names do match. We have taken over the complete identity from the uh, source server even though it's a VMware virtual machine the original source was actually Hyper-V virtual machine. Double take is completely hardware agnostic. I'm going to launch the Oracle Enterprise Manager A11G log in again using the same credentials as I used previously. I'm going to navigate to the tables and search for the demo database table I created earlier. And I can see demo table. So I'll open up demo table and, and then I'll edit it. And we should see the column that I created also. So I know very little about Oracle, but I've managed to protect an Oracle enterprise server with just a few clicks using double take availability. Please visit us at www.bcap.com.au.